Hey, man. What's up? Uh, what time are you coming over to work on this intercooler? Hey, um, I actually don't think I'll be able to make it today, so you're going to be on your own if that's all right. Uh, yeah, I guess if you got something else to do. All right. All right, man, my bad. It's all right. I'll see you later. All right, see ya. All right, bye. Yes! Finally, I get to work in the garage alone. It's so quiet in here. So nice. Holman, can you grab me that wrench? Yip schedules. No more yip schedules today. I'm all alone. Woo! Welcome back to the hangar. I'm Mike, and I'm the only Mike for the day. It's nice to have a little freedom. Today in the hangar hideout, we're gonna be swapping out my intercooler on the C7 Corvette. The one on there is all right, but it's a little restrictive between inlet and outlet. So we're gonna be swapping out for an air-to-air -air pro charger intercooler. That should flow a lot better. We're gonna start off by jacking the car up. We gotta pull this front bumper off. The intercooler should pop right out, it's just a couple bolts. And we'll see how the new one fits up. Might have to fab some piping, some brackets, we don't know yet. Because the one that's on there, Place horizontally, and the pro charger one is vertical. So, might be a little different. But we'll figure it out together as a team. Us. There we go. It's as simple as that. It's got four bolts up top, two push pins, six bolts on the side. I think six at the bottom and we're done. I had to unplug the front two cameras and the side marker as well. But now, we start getting this intercooler out of here. We got the inlet and the outlet. And I believe there's just four bolts holding the intercooler in. And a couple of air lines. close.
So, got a little hiccup. After looking through the box that we ordered from Brute Speed, it seems as if I forgot to order the brackets. So there's going to be a little bit of delay. So I'm going to get those on order now, and we'll be back with brackets. But it's looking like we're going to have to change some charge pipes around because the outlet doesn't really line up. So we'll have to do some fabricating too. So you'll see that. Four to six days later. I fucked up. Ordered the brackets. They came in. Got so excited to put them on that I completely forgot to film it. So you guys can see. So they're on the car. <laughs> That's good news. They fit the intercoolers on. Uh, I'm just working on charge piping now. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Check it out. It's on. Those are the brackets. I mean, now you see them. So all I'm working on now is I have to connect those two pipes with a little coupler, which I have here. I just got to cut a piece out of it. And then this is the other side. We have to connect this charge pipe all the way. You can hardly see it. It's right there. This was the coupler that was on the car already. So I think if I cut it right about here, it should line up. Then we don't have to do any fab work. All right, let's do some measuring. We'll do some cutting because they got to be in the perfect spot. And like I always say, measure twice, cut once. And I'm not like Paulman. Because when he does that, he measures wrong twice. Because of Paulman. Four and a half. So I need five inches of straight off this hose right here. So normally what I do is I like to put a pipe in there so I can have an edge to cut on the inside to cut along with the razor. But getting five inches of pipe in the silicone hose is gonna be very, very difficult. That's what she said. So I'm gonna go past that on the bandsaw over there, or I could use a razor, but bandsaw's quicker. And then I'll put the pipe in from the other side and However much excess I have, I'll put that in the pipe. It's easier that way. It's just how I like to do it. All right, so if we need five inches, I'm gonna cut six, because six gives you enough room where you can put a clamp on the pipe so you have an easy way to rotor cut around. So let's cut six. All done. That quick. We are gonna put the bandsaw side over the pipe, because it's an ugly cut, and you don't want that on your car. No one does. Give it a little lube first. We're gonna measure from the inside. Get about five inches. It's about four and a half. Make sure it's square, just shy of five. I think we'll call that good. So I like to put a clamp over it, just to hold it in place while I'm cutting it. Take your razor blade. Try to get it right along the pipe. It's okay to hit the pipe first. It's better than to cut into the silicone hose too far. Just work your way up so you find the edge. There you have a five inch silicone coupler, just like that. I was a little shy. I gave it room to spray it off. So it's gonna work. So let's try this on the driver's side and see if it works.
As you can see, we got the Pro Charger all mounted up, charge pipes are on. Ended up having not to do any fabrication on the passenger side, just cut the silicone hose and it bolted up just like the driver's side. So that was kind of an easy installation. Uh, hopefully it's a good one. So hopefully now we get a lot better intake air temperatures and we don't see a pressure drop between the inlet and the outlet because this intercooler is much, much bigger. And since it's mounted straight up and down, it should be cooler as well, get more airflow. So now all we have to do is get this front bumper back on, tidy some stuff up under the hood, and then we'll be done. So let's get this front bumper back on. As a bonus, I also relocated my intake air temperature sensor. Because previously, it was part of my mass airflow sensor, which you could see right there. And now, it's right here on the intake manifold. And the reason for that is because it wasn't picking up any temperature changes due to the meth injection right here. So now that it's located after the meth injection in the airstream, it should pick up the temperature change. So when I go to the track now, I can have the meth off and I can see exactly what the intercooler is doing to my intake temperatures because it should be lowering it. And now I can monitor what my meth injection is doing as well. And since that's part of the tune, it'll actually make more horsepower. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me put a new intercooler on the C7 Corvette. It should make the air cooler and more dense, and a denser air means a better air. But if you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And if you like Palman List episodes, leave a comment below to let them know. But I want to thank you guys for hiding out with us, and we'll see you on the next episode.